Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Ethan Drew. We've got another guest with us today. It's going to be a TikTok, TikTok star by the name ma- of Monov. Hey, everyone. So excited to be here. So for those that don't know Monov, he is garnering a well-earned following over on TikTok for his bass duets and orig- original content as well. And uh, yeah, just give us a bit of an elevator pitch as to who you are and what your uh, gimmick is and what you do. Hey, so um, so my name's Monov. I, I sing bass on TikTok. Um, I had like bass duets to videos, but um, I also do things like, well, on TikTok, I started out as doing like harmony buildups. Um, so I'd layer my own voice on top of each other to make like covers of like popular songs. And now increasingly, I'm um, doing a lot more stuff on YouTube. So I'm making full covers. I've actually got a full cover coming up tomorrow. Um, probably already out by the time the, this airs, but um, it's of Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles. And um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about where things are headed. So That's going to be cool. Guys, if you are excited to hear more about Monov and his story, make sure you drop a thumbs up, drop a comment down below. It helps with the algorithm significantly. The algorithm pushes the videos back to you, so make sure you comment if you're able. Make sure you subscribe if you want to be notified whenever these videos come out. Make sure you hit the bell. Make sure you're notified. And if you are enjoying the content to the point of wanting to contribute further than a subscription, I have a Patreon link in the description below if, you're, if you choose to be that generous. Not required by any means to enjoy the content. Now, with that said, we're getting ready to dive right into this. We're going to learn more about Monov and his story. So we're going to start off with the first question of the podcast. Be really light. What is your favorite or preferred drink? Um, so my favorite drink is probably a, it's a virgin pina colada. Um, so I, 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 don't, I don't drink alcohol, but I have like the biggest sweet tooth ever. And, and I've tried like... Um, when it, like after I stopped drinking alcohol, I really missed having pina coladas, um, and 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 they're just so good. Um, right now, actually, though, I've got like a, a chamomile tea, and I do, I do love those. Have them every day. A good old chamomile, huh? Yeah, proper relaxing stuff. Now I'm gonna be I'm gonna level with you and be honest. I'm not a huge tea person, but. Uh-huh. I've recently started drinking it again. Like I, I was always that one kid where I grew yeah. up hating tea. Absolutely really? loathed it. Mm. Would if you put it in front of me, I would rather thirst to death at that point in my time. Really? But, but I have since found a well, I wouldn't say affinity, but I've started opening my mind up to drinking tea. I guess. Yeah. I mean, not like regular tea, not like not like herbal teas. Regular tea is massive in Britain. It's like the big stereotype. But yeah, yeah. people are drinking it all the time. Yep, 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 yep. This is uh, my drink of choice. I'm sure you've probably seen it in doing your homework. Uh, ginger ale. I love ginger ale. This is like so this is my favorite brand. It's sold over here in the U.S. and this is my by far my favorite. I've been trying to get a sponsorship from them. Yeah, they need to sponsor you. I only oh. tried ginger ale actually like like um, a month or two ago maybe for the first time. But I was really I was genuinely hooked. Like so good. Oh my gosh, it's great. Yeah, so good. It is fantastic. So pina colada mm. and then chamomile tea is what you're drinking right now. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's my go-to. So what is, I, this is really dumb. This is a really dumb question to me, but so is chamomile a flower? Is that right? Or is it, is it just so. a plant? <laughs> I was um, going to say, yeah. like, what, what kind of plant is like a chamomile tea made from? Um, yeah, so it's made from like a chamomile plant, right? Um, I, I, think, I think it's... I don't even know why I'm speaking like I know anything about it. I have no idea. I think it's, I think it's a plant. I think it's a plant. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, fig- I figured I'd ask because I was curious, but, you know... Yeah. Okay, so diving into music, and this is a very broad question, so take as much time as you need to answer it, but um, what or who got you into music? In, into music generally or like acapella? In general. <clears throat> wow, okay. Um, so into music generally, I, I started really young, actually, with music generally. I started, um, I was in choirs from from just about day one, really. Um, 
Uh, I was I was in my primary school choir from like year one all the way to year eight, which is like all of the grades essentially in like American terms. And um, I, I so I was always singing, but I played guitar for like seven years throughout like primary school at the same time. And um, I, was, I was really <laughs> I was really bad at guitar as well. I just like would never <laughs> practice. Um, I really hope my teacher, Mr. Alexander, if you're watching. Um, I'm really sorry. I would never practice. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I, I uh, yeah. I was useless at it. Like, I just just never really progressed at all. But then when I switched to secondary school, I decided I wanted to try something new. Switched to piano and fell in love with it. Like, practiced all the time. Like, I had I had a great teacher as well. Um, yeah. And just it just made the whole process so much fun. Like, I just I just really enjoyed it. I was learning all my favorite songs. Um, I remember I learned like a Star Wars medley as well, like right at the start. And I was just like playing it and like losing my mind. Um, and then I got into, I, I did a lot of jazz as well after that point. So I like, I, um, my, my teacher was like really big on jazz and really kind of like got me into jazz. So I sort of fell in love with that side of thing. I did, I did like a jazz summer school two years yeah. running and, um, Sort of in and around the same time, I was like the head chorister of the choir at school as well, because just because I'd been doing it for so long, um, and they'd just been like turning up like every week, um, and yeah, just just really loved it. Just kind of continued on all throughout school, and then just over time, like increasingly, um, yeah, moved towards a cappella. But it wasn't ever like really big in like my family or anything. Like my parents aren't um, musicians. I think my mom played piano when she was a kid, but that's about it really and that's like, about the extent of it pretty much yeah yeah no no one in my family's like crazy musical or anything um yeah i think i think i'm like the first one that actually like really enjoys it so to confirm you said that you were started singing right around primary school yeah yeah like um singing for fun like i never really had like lessons or anything until like much later just casual every day yeah, exactly. in the car in the shower kind of thing exactly exactly like i enjoyed singing yeah 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 i think i'd have to say i'm about the same i, I was I, I did it completely for for fun had no darn idea what i was doing yeah, at that age same. but yeah that's where i was at and at that age at least 100 percent. so um where did when did you find out that you could sing when did you realize that people were like we want to hear you sing like Ooh. when did that happen in your life Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's really interesting actually, because so like I, I sang at school in choirs and stuff, but I would never have like considered myself to have like a, like an exceptional voice or like a really good voice. I just like really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and I, I had like a really, really, really high voice, like insane, like soprano one type voice, like <laughs> <laughs> um, like proper squeaker um, back in the day before my voice dropped. And so I'd always be singing like that really, really high parts. And when my voice, my voice dropped really late as well. I was like 15 when my voice dropped. And um, I remember like, like this, this is such a tangent, but like I remember, I'll go for um, it. I, I remember like I was in a school play. I did a lot of drama as well growing up. So I was in like, we did like a musical theater um show of cabaret uh when i was in year 10 so yeah like around 14 15 and yep. my voice hadn't dropped so i got cast with this really really high solo singing part and it was only a few lines thank god um like right before um like everyone else came in and the week before the play went on my voice started to drop but it didn't like drop drop it went like I had like one octave, it was like C3 to C4, like, and it was like super nasal and like, I couldn't, I like, I just didn't know how to support anymore. Cause like everything was like changing. And I remember I tried, I was like, like my God complex kicked in and I was like, I'm going <laughs> to yeah. do this anyway. And I'm going to celebrate. And, yeah. um, like went on stage was like, yeah, okay, this is it. And <laughs> I tried to, I tried to sing it and my voice went, uh, and just cracked so hard in front of everyone and i just went silent <laughs> oh and, man and that was that was it and i was like oh okay i guess i'm just not like destined to be a singer anymore like i just completely stopped singing basically i'd, I'd turn up to choir still but i would like just chill in the back for for maybe two years 
while this was all going on, like re really fell out of love with it. I just assumed I was like not good at singing at all. And then like one day, like, like genuinely almost out of nowhere, like we were in choir and there was like a bass E in, in one of the songs, like, so like an E2. Yeah. And I remember it, it was like the last note, right? So it's supposed to be like this big, like rumble. And yep. um, I remember being able to sing it. And yeah. in my mind, like alarm bells started ringing. I was like, this is insane. Like I can, I can hit an E2. Like, <laughs> and, and like, yeah, cause I'd never, I'd never even thought of myself as having like a deep voice before. I didn't like, mm. in my head, I just thought I had like a normal voice. And like, as yeah. well, cause my, my speaking voice isn't like super low or anything. So I was just like, right. Yeah. Like, okay. Like my voice is just normal. And then we were just like, bah. and I was just like, wow, this is, cause this was when that. everyone was doing it. Just and, the and, E2. At that no point, problem. I kind of was like, oh my God, like, I really want to try singing low more because that feeling was crazy. And I remember just like sticking with it and finding like, finding like a cappella music and like trying some stuff out. And I remember during COVID, then like probably two years later, because I'd just been like, falling back in love with it, trying loads of stuff, but I had a loop pedal. I remember because we were just bored during COVID, I posted a video of myself doing like a, a buildup of Imagine Dragons Believer. Yeah. Um, that I'd made on my loop pedal um, with just like layering my voice. And I remember loads of my friends in the comments, like losing their minds. And <laughs> I was, I was like, Oh, like I didn't realize like other people would think this was cool. I was just like really excited about it myself yeah and and that was probably the first time that i like really had that moment of like whoa like <clears throat> people actually, actually want to hear me sing yeah yeah exactly exactly um and there was also the whole thing of like i've been learning subs as well sort of along the way um especially ever since i like if, once i sang that e i like went down the rabbit hole of like bass singing and had been practicing subs so like whenever i'd done subs in front of people and they'd worked people would like lose their minds because like who, who'd ever heard someone sing that low? Like I'd never heard anyone sing mm -hmm. with that sort of sound before. Um, so, so yeah, it was, it was really cool. It kind of all happened like over, over the course of a couple of years, really. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it really just kind of the last couple of years even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I still like, even when I was doing stuff on TikTok, to be fair, like I never really thought of myself as being like a great singer. Like I'm just like a fan of bass, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, is it, like that a fan sounds of like me. <laughs> mm, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. I was just like, I was just really into it and just like big fan of like acapella music in general. So I was just kind of like contributing I remember, to it because I thought it was fun. I remember, I believe... The first bass song that ever got me hooked into acapella, or like the the one song that really like I heard bass and I was like ooh, was um, Pentatonix's Daft Punk cover. Hell yeah, that right there was the one that got me like trying to replicate it. Oh my god, yeah, I remember. I and I feel like every bass has done this as well, but like there was a point where my voice still wasn't. Like, I feel like my voice has continued to get low, but I couldn't really hit B1s um, back when I found it. And there was that, like, Avi has that thing of, like, never over, you know, like that whole thing. And, like, yeah. I would just be there, like, trying to do it in chess. Like, every morning when I woke up, I'd just be, like, in the shower, getting ready for school. And I'd be like, never over. And just, over. like, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, the notes were not there. But I do it all the time. And I also just would, like, do this thing where it's like, I wouldn't realize people could also hear me when I was singing to myself. So I'd just be, like, in the car or, like, with friends. I'd be like, never yeah, and then they'd be like, "Mon, of what are you doing?" And I'd be like, what "Oh, sorry, doing? like I didn't realize you could hear me." Yeah, I was, I was that kid that was reaching for that B one whenever I first heard that come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember cool. starting whenever I was, I believe it was my voice started to drop maybe a little bit right around fourteen. Right, and I, I also had the E two, and I was so proud of that E two at the time. It's a good feeling. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I wanted to see what kind of singer I was at the time. So I, I took to Google and I looked up um, 
like how people describe voices and stuff and voice classifications. And it said, if you have, it said something like if you had like a thick low range or something, it was like something really silly and generic, like really broad. I was like, yeah. I have a really thick low range. I'm a Basso <laughs> Profundo. <laughs> oh, I, I was the same. I was the same. I was like, I'm a true bass. Like, hundred <laughs> percent that's it like glenn miller and me like <laughs> there's glenn miller and then there's me no that's <laughs> but that's kind of how i started like it was i i i had the e2 yeah and then i was like okay maybe i can sing this crazy daft punk song and you should have yeah. heard me like <sighs> it was yeah. so bad <laughs> it was so no, bad genuinely genuinely, like, genuinely I, I feel like i feel like everyone Everyone has that, right? Like you just you just go through that phase of being like, you discover you can sing low, and you're like, I'm the man. <laughs> I am the man, even though the, the notes you're singing are an octave above what most people can do, or like most in that in that spectrum of singing can do. Yeah, it's crazy some of the notes some of these people can hit. Like, well, I mean, I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to Glenn Miller's podcast that I recently did with him, but the man literally speaks at an F. F it's double O F. Yeah. It it's is insane. insane. Absolutely nuts. Then you've got people like, like inside his head. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like I have no idea, but I imagine that it probably gets irritating at some point because it's, it's his voice carries so much that yeah. it, it, I would imagine that. Okay. So for me, whenever my voice is feeling super resonant, a lot of higher partials in the morning yeah. i can feel it in my chest and it's almost like my chest is rattling yeah and i guess cool it's doing that. it a little bit it, it's cool but if i guess with someone like lynn if it if you live with it in your entire life then i'd imagine it'd probably eventually get annoying yeah yeah maybe, maybe i guess like <laughs> it'd be hard to like speak quietly right and just say your voice is just always audible he was literally like he was not speaking very far away and it's just like his voice is filling up the room and yeah. painting it you know it's it's really powerful but it's pretty crazy yeah oh but back on track just a little bit so um <laughs> so who were some of the most influential figures in your life as well as your musical career um in in my life so like outside of music um so it's a it's a classic answer but like definitely my parents like i really i really really look up to my parents I, I think they're i think they're great people and if i can like if i can be like half the people they are i feel like i you know i'll be satisfied um and and yeah just just really really grateful really lucky um in terms of music um there's a few actually so like um number number one is um james james rose from from accent um so J james is um uh, has been a long time friend of mine for the past few years especially since i started getting into music and um they've been such a mentor they they lived like one road over from me at uni um mm -hmm. which is and, and also like went to the same school as me and lived like 10 minutes from me growing up as well, which is just a crazy coincidence. But yeah. um, like has, has been such a, yeah, like a mentor and a guide and um, like a really close <clears throat> friend as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky to have had, had someone like that guiding me through. Um, in terms of other people as well, there's also like Casper, um, Marwan and Tommy have been huge, huge um like just so supportive so such like inspirations in terms of like um like yeah I'm, I'm very lucky to be friends with these with these people um but like I, i'd always show them my stuff when 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 they'd be coming out and they'd, they'd teach me new things um you know marwan taught me so much about like editing and makes marwan taught me how to time correct my parts um which which like time correction is especially in like Melodyne is like such a big thing in terms of syncing your audio parts up to make everything sound like tight and like mm -hmm. um, has taught me so much about like mixing in general. Um, like Tommy has taught me so much about arranging. Casper was, a first, you know, like the person who pushed me to do, like to start making full covers um, and 
and has always just been like such a big support along the way you know like um I'm, I'm so lucky to have had these people um also one other person to mention as well like in terms of mixing um johnny stewart has has been so so kind to me like has has taken time to like talk me through his mixes like um taught me so much on this it is like a huge reason for like the like the amount of progress that i feel like i've made with mixing so like I, i'm so lucky to have had heard these people around me um to like get to call them friends and like you know to have have their guidance through like my music journey so i'm, I'm really lucky side note for everyone that's watching i get my mixing advice from from my off here and he gets his from johnny yeah so if that says anything about how good johnny is then Johnny's i don't know incredible. Speaking Johnny Mix, of be which, prepared for the bass gang, which yeah. just came out today, actually. Yes, it did. Guys, make sure you go yeah. check that out, by the way. Bass gang boys, we love you. Shout out to you guys. Y'all are awesome. Um, shout out to his friend Jason also. I'm sorry. What was his name again? John? James. 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 Yeah. Shout out to James if he if you're listening to this, man. Um, I, I was going to say, oh, uh, yeah. So I also plan to have Johnny on at some point, trying to work yeah. it out. That'd be awesome. He's a heck of an individual. Yeah, yeah, really is. He's so kind. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, so um, what is something that one of these influential figures has said to you that has stuck with you your entire life or stuck with you since you met them? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Um Perhaps think of one of the ones that's driven you to do something or pushed you out of your comfort zone or anything that they yeah. might have said. I think, I think, um, like the first thing that comes to mind is, is James, James Rose, um, who talked to me really early on about, um, how excited they were that there's someone with such a big passion for acapella, um, you know, the, the start, like starting to come into the like industry and, um, like talk to me about how they had that same passion for acapella, like when they started and the, and then for me, I saw like this, the, the arrangement that James has done are, are like uh, genuinely mind blowing, like one of the best arrangers of all time, in my opinion. And to have them say that to me and be able to look to the future and say like you know i'm like i'm now so excited for what's to come i, th I think mm -hmm. that's that that's always been really special to me um and ju just just that like that passion for acapella that i have like because that is like you know acapella is like a huge part of my life at this point mm -hmm. like um and and it's like it's like <laughs> all the music i listen to really like to have to have them <clears throat> say that to me like it's it's, it's so special yeah. yeah absolutely shout out to uh james again yeah massive shout out heck of an individual we're talking about here so far might have to meet him yeah. at some point yes definitely. so um so you've kind of briefly touched on this so um do you play any instruments so you mentioned piano and that you you did attempt to play guitar in the younger years are there any others that you play um no so i play i still play guitar now a little bit I, when I was playing guitar at school, it was like electric guitar and I was trying to learn how to do like all like the finger picking stuff, which I never quite got the hang of. Um, but I think it was like so much of it was to do with just being like a really young kid and just like, you know, when you're like told to play an instrument, you're like told to practice, just be like, no, I don't want to. Mm, I don't um, feel like it. I'm lazy. Yeah, exactly. As I just wanted to watch the Simpsons movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, um, uh, I think now, like, I definitely really enjoy playing guitar. I've really enjoyed trying to learn songs with more like um, difficult fingerstyle patterns, um, and trying to learn to play like Quarter Past Four by Avi Kaplan. Trying to trying to learn to play like Blackbird, um, things like that. And and like it's, I, I also play. Um, yeah, I still play piano. But now, actually, like, my biggest focus is just singing. Like, I haven't done a whole lot of um, 
instrument playing recently actually but i'd love to i'd love to get back more into playing piano again like i really miss it yeah um you mentioned finger style with guitar i will yeah. send you uh, a link to a couple of guys that i've been watching for years and years that play finger style and do their own music and if you think some of the stuff out there that like that's mainstream finger style is hard yeah you, you, you oh ye of little faith <laughs> These I guys can, are completely mind blowing. It's insane. There's also the thing of like um, some some people, you know, when they do the like, um, what's it called? It's like the like the percussion as well with the guitar. Yes, um, these guys do that. Um, yeah. There's two of them. One of them, his name is Andy McKee, and the other one, is, his name is Antoine Defour. I probably butchered the pronounce the pronunciation of that, but those two. They, if you think that the hand percussion is crazy, they they go they tune their guitars down and up to mm -hmm. odd positions. They yeah. use percussion. Andy literally plays a lot of his songs on the neck of the guitar and never even goes down near the bass at all. <laughs> it's, and it's like he's literally up and down the entire fretboard. It is I think that's awesome so to watch. Cool. Like you know, to like use an instrument and like really invented ways i think it's so cool like um you know the like the bell tones thing that people can do with the guitars where they will like kind of like tap the strings a little bit like that and it will create mm -hmm. these like like harmonic sounds so yes cool. it's it's like it's um it's like you're muting it but not at the same time yeah exactly exactly yeah like blows my mind it is really cool i'll send you those yeah. guys when we're off camera for sure it'll be it's a heck of a sight to watch yeah so um what are let's see okay so what are some things that people may not know about you so with your online persona what are some things that you're willing to share that people might not know about you it could be random facts things you like to do stuff like that okay um so two things um first is the outside of music i'm um i'm also a student i'm studying law um so potentially going to become a lawyer after after uni <laughs> um alongside music but the other thing and um yeah probably the thing i'm actually really excited to talk about is that i i'm also um really into running um and so i'm actually running a marathon in two weeks time oh wow um, and i'm running it for beat which is the uk's eating disorder charity um so i'm actually fundraising at the moment and um so yeah, like it, like if anyone watching, you know, like would want to support, I mean, I'd, I'd be hugely grateful, but yeah, um, I'm super excited for like, you know, the opportunity to run a marathon. It's my first one. So I'm really excited. How long have you been, been running and things like that? Like just training for it. Um, so I've been training for this for probably around like five and a half coming up on six months now. Um, I started like in April um during like my exams just as a way to like relieve stress so, like i used to run at school with my mom like i, I started running with my mom okay. um but then i kind of fell out of love with it towards the end of school and like didn't really run over uni and then like right at the end of last year i was like do you know what? i want to try it again i feel like it'd be really good fun and just you know just went went crazy for it <laughs> and decided like do you know what i'm gonna run a marathon and, well Hey, I, I admire your endurance because I, I like cardio, but I've got to work on my endurance. <laughs> I wish I could run a marathon. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Like I, I um, it's, it's definitely taken ages to build up to be fair. I've been like working on it really, really slowly over the course of like um, the last few months and just like just building it up and building it up and building it up. Like, plus, yeah. like I could like just about run 5K at the start and now it's like, yeah, I'm just like just really enjoying myself. So there you go, guys. The link to um, there will be a link in the description to this marathon's page that that talks about it. If you guys are interested in looking into that, thank you so much. Um, are there any other things that you would like to share that uh, that you d perhaps do in your off time? Ooh, um, I've been I've been um quite into uh video games actually recently um been uh been playing through the last of us and also through um spider-man miles morales because the the spider-man 2 is coming out on ps4 next month and i'm so excited oh that's cool that as well yeah 
I'm also reading as well. I'm reading Game of Thrones at the moment, which I'm loving. I never watched the TV shows, so loving that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you play any other games or are those just the two that you are um, playing right now? I played Uncharted loads. Have you ever played Uncharted? I've not played Uncharted, but I've been looking at playing it at some point. It's so good. It's so good. I also played, lo while I was at school, I played so much Overwatch. Um, this is so much, and a lot of Call of Duty as well. Probably probably to my parents' dismay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they were telling me, like, please do something else. I was like, no, leave me alone. Like, um, but, hey, yeah. there are worse ways to spend your time. It's true. It's true. I could have, I, yeah, I, I, um, there's, there's a lot of other things I could have been doing. Mm -hmm. well, video video games are good. It's hand-eye coordination, right? So absolutely. What call or what Call of Duty games did you end up playing? I played um I played a lot of Advanced Warfare and I played a lot of Black Ops Three as well. Gotcha. Um, with my friends. I was I was quite late to the Call of Duty party. I but, see um, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really I still want to play Modern Warfare Two at some point. The, the story is supposed to be insane. The new one. No, the the, um, the old one. I mean, yeah, the old one. The old, the old one, one. The 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 original Modern Warfare through Modern Warfare Three. This the story is pretty strong, brother. I'm telling you. Yeah. You. It's got, it's got to be done. Yeah, what, it's, what, um, it's really good. What game? What games do you play? Um, I tend to play. So I mean, I have several, but the ones I play the most, I play Minecraft. Um, nice. I love I, Minecraft. It's it's the best. Um, I've got. I, I play Minecraft. I play. I've recently renewed my uh, PlayStation Plus membership, so I, I'm back online for a little while. Um, I'm awesome. I'm playing. Um, I'm replaying through Call of Duty World War Two, which is from 2017. Um, nice. I may play um, Cold War. Not sure yet. I I'm remember so hating that game. With the Call of Duty games, I didn't even know that was a thing. There are so many games. I would probably have to sp sit down and like, like dedicate ten minutes to tell you how many games there are and what order they go in. It's there's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. But as far as games that I play, I'm mostly just Minecraft and Call of Duty, and um, mm -hmm. occasionally yeah. I'll play this um, tank game called World of Tanks. But I don't, I don't play it <laughs> nice. that much. Nice and yeah. um i um but, yeah I, I i like we've just um at uh, the flat room we've, we've just recently got a tv so i'm going to try and set up my ps4 on it and like hopefully we can get like games nights going um, oh absolutely and like make it like a social thing i think it'd be really fun absolutely absolutely that would be fun yeah hey we might have to add you at some point well. we might be able to play a game or two or something we'll see yes yeah definitely do <laughs> All right, um, back to music here. Yeah. Um, so, how often do you practice singing throughout the week? Ooh, not as often as I should. <laughs> is is the answer? I um, I do occasionally. I do a lot of warming up, um, especially before I try and sing high, because my voice is not naturally built for singing high. Um, so I spend I spend so long warming up when I'm trying to sing, like especially in the higher fourth octave, like. Um, some of those notes, like especially if you're trying to mix or like trying to like belt up there, like, you know, got to be kind to your voice, right? Like I've definitely had it before where I've like been like trying to sing up there and then like, you know, when you try and sing like in falsetto after, after something like that and you're like, it's just air. It's just like, and just nothing comes out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like, you know, you've pushed it too far. But mm -hmm. I, I practice singing a lot, like especially in, like if I'm driving anywhere. Um, then I'll be like singing along to myself, trying to practice like technique wise, mess around with like placement and vowel sounds. I um, actually, before the podcast, I was doing some like singing straw warm ups as well. I've been doing a lot of those recently to try and get like better vocal fold closure. Um, mm -hmm. It was something I, I think I struggled with a little bit. Um, while, I was on, while I was in the bass gang um, trip, while I, while I was there in, in Bruno recently, um, I, I was speaking to Peter a lot and, and he was teaching me a lot about like technique where, where possible. So, so been, been like trying, trying to learn as much as I can really, but Absolutely. definitely don't practice it enough. <laughs> uh, I understand completely. I'm right. I'm right there with you. I feel like a lot of us are guilty of that, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I, I know I am hand raised. Yeah. I guilty, guilty, guilty. You and me both. I sing a lot for fun. <laughs> typically the most most of my practice is typically the same just 
singing freely, whatever I'm yeah. doing. I could be cleaning the house over here and yeah. I could just be like, huh, I'm just going to go sing Oogie Boogie or I'm just going to go sing yeah. like Johnny Cash or something. Mm. <clears throat> just something off yeah. the wall. But 100%. so um, what does your warm up routine look like on any given day? And do you have a go to warm up exercise? Um, so I like I talked about with the straw. I've actually got the straw here, actually. Um, but I've got like my straw i'll fill it up with like a little bit of water and i'll like sing scales but through the straw so like and like um try and try and work on like placement and stuff but it's because the straw provides resistance um it's it's like it's part of like a um a category of exercises called um sovt so semi-occluded vocal tract exercises um mm -hmm. so i do a lot of that but especially when I'm singing bass, like you don't really need that for singing bass as much. Um, right. Especially because bass is like, you know, you're trying to go for like a warmer sound a lot of the time, um, mm -hmm. unless you're doing like something like chest fry, which I can't really do. But um, for, for bass singing, a lot of the focus is actually on relaxing. So a huge amount of what I do, pretty much most of what I do is actually just stretching and like massaging. So I don't know um, about like, like you or like the rest of like the young bass singers. Um, but like, you know, when you're like hunched over a desk or something all day, or like, you're just like looking at your phone. Like, I feel like you build up a lot of tension in like these areas and you're like in your back. I'm and, not and, the only one that feels that. No, not at all. It's, it's huge. And it's, it's huh. one of the biggest things that like, like when, when I've stretched and warmed up and like massaged out everything and like tried to really focus <clears> on just like, you know, slowing myself down, just relaxing and just like easing all the tension. Mm -hmm. I can get like one or two notes lower than, than I could have done when I started. Like I've gone from having like barely C2s to having B flats before. Um, yeah. Like I can't say that I've ever stretched like that and had any results yet. Cause I don't think I've tried it, but that may yeah. be worth looking into for me try it there's there's a lot of like you know massaging like these areas trying to free up your larynx a little bit like massaging these areas here doing stretches like you know where you like breathe like you take a breath in and you breathe out and you're like mm -hmm. you know just trying like loosen up these areas and also just like like putting your arm behind your back and like just kind of letting your head fall like not pulling down your head but just letting mm -hmm. your head fall like naturally and you get this massive stretch along here and doing that on both sides and like also jaw as well. Like, so, you know, a lot of times when people are stressed, they will like clench their jaws massively. Um, yeah. So doing things like that, like and massaging all of it out, just making sure you're like as relaxed as possible is, is huge. Yeah. Also, I, whenever, um, if when it, when it comes to anything remotely close to medical, I always make this uh, disclaimer. Guys, neither Monov nor I are physicians or doctors. So take what we say with a grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah, it's being not careful. medical doctors. So just keep that in mind. Moving along, though, um, I will definitely have to try that at some point to see if that helps me out. So useful. I will say that if it helps me out at all, because I'm already I'm ar already have a low A in the mornings. So, I mean, I wonder if that would help me get that G sharp. We'll see. Wow. All right. Is, I guess we'll see. Insane. Low A in the mornings. Yeah, I got the low A, a one in the mornings most mornings so i'm hoping i can get that g sharp again i've had yeah. the g sharp one time mm, one I've, time you and me both i've had it like yeah i think i think i've had it twice in my life like the a is such a rarity as well for me like it, the a is like on like a really really good morning if i'm like really like this really unwell <laughs> um but like b flats i think is pretty common for me nowadays I've got B flats reliably every morning. The, um, as I pr progress throughout the day, typically my, the bottom of my range raises up to, to the C2. Sometimes a breathy B1 mm. usually, yeah. usually, but the yeah, thing is normally just like most of the time during the day, like a C2 just about. Yeah. And then like, if it's, if it's a low day, I'll have like a B1, but yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, and the funniest thing too, is that I, I don't really like my voice. I guess there's a funny little trend I've noticed ever since I've really started to explore it and do a lot of stuff with it. 
and just really paid attention to what it does, I've noticed that I have this really strong resonance, a lot of really higher partials, but I don't have any, a huge range, I would say. So in the morning I could, I would have like an easily, like a really thick A1, but then like after that I have no G sharp. It just kind of drops off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's I, really I, weird. I the same. I have the same. Yeah. Like I, f <clears throat> I feel like it would be a little bit more gradual at least. Yeah. I, I would have thought so as well. Um, like I, I, I have that definitely as well where I'd be like, uh, there's a, there's a video up on my TikTok. Wait, I'll see if I can find it actually really quickly. But there's a Go video up on my TikTok of when I was like, I was so ill. I was so ill. I had like musical theater rehearsals all day. Came back and fell asleep. Um, this was like last year. I was doing a show yeah. and fell asleep at like 6 p.m. Woke up at 10 p.m. Couldn't speak for the first 10 minutes of waking up. Like I actually just couldn't vocalize anything. Wow. And then when my voice came back, it was so low. But it was it was like, like proper loud. It'd be like, ah, uh, like proper loud, like, mm -hmm. but like in chest. Um, and then like a B flat and like, just then just wouldn't go past that. Yeah. And another f interesting little, um, thing that I've noticed ever since I really started like taking the advice of several like vocal coaches and other singers and stuff, yeah. I, I used to be bound eternally bound and stuck to that B1. Like I was, yeah. so I, I don't think I've ever told you this, but I have had a time trying to get that low B flat for years, yeah. literally years. I've had the, I've had the B1 since I was 19. Oh, and wow. so I was like, okay. I remember like age 18, I hit yeah. a B flat when I was, when I was ill one time and that was it and it made me mad because i couldn't do it again for a, such a long time it seems to be a really elusive note for like so many so many of like the young bases like it just never seems to it just never wants to stay to... yeah i don't know if there's something about that note specifically i don't know but i i found the video um Some... listen to this it's, it's so it. pitchy because i had like zero control of my voice because i was so ill right but listen to this Oh, I think the noise cancellation is oh. cutting it out. Oh, no. You might want to put it on, like, closer to the mic. Yeah. It might pick it up better. I, oh, yeah. Oh. There you go. There it is. Yeah. There's your A. It was like, it was, it, was, it, was, it was in the floor. But I couldn't go past that, even though it was, like, that powerful on my lowest note. It's, it's odd because you would imagine it to be more yeah. gradual. Yeah. Do you know what blows my mind is, like, the people that can just, like, the, the, whose voices naturally speak at like the very bottom of their range but it's like mm -hmm. they're just chilling speaking but then they can't go lower than their speaking voice well i'll tell you it's funny you mentioned that because i'm typically one of those people like i, really? I typically i typically talk it around like a like an e or d like yeah. i am right now but yeah. like i usually bottom out like my worst days i bottom out at a c sharp Really, my I'm I'm completely the opposite. Like even now, my voice is sitting low, and like today is like a lower speaking voice day for me. But like <clears throat> not, normally, my voice is like sat up here. Like I'm just like higher up, like probably third octave, probably touching on the fourth octave. Like yeah, you know, I like I I, <laughs> I um you know the so I had a TikTok recently that really blew up. Um, is a duo of like Jonathan Tilkin singing "Run Me Like a River," and. Mm -hmm. I sang like a, a, a C1 in that. Yes, and you did. <laughs> there, was this, there, was this, uh, there was this vocal coach that reacted to it and said at the end, it's like, I wonder where his speaking voice sits. <laughs> I, <laughs> because like, I don't know what she's like with a C1 or something. Like, he's, he's expecting me to sound like his latter part, like JD Sumner. <laughs> like, I, 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 uh, and I, I had my Patreon video pinned on my page and that was on like a higher speaking voice day. So it's like, Hey guys, like subscribe to me, like just follow me on Patreon, you know, like please support me. And, um, everyone was like commenting so much on that vocal coach's <laughs> video being like, this guy's voice is so high. What's going on? Like he, like his voice is so high. It doesn't match his face at all. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I don't know what people were expecting. I don't know what you were expecting, but I'm not Ken. I'm not Ken Turner. No, no. 
not at all. Like my my voice is just like a normal a normal voice. I think. Uh, I mean, I mean, you got the natural lows in there for sure. Sometimes, sometimes that that video was the one that I do edit. Yeah, I just realized yeah, that. Yeah, you added you added um VP. Yeah, VP for sure. For those that don't know, VP is vocal percussion. Yeah. But yeah, like um, in the acapella world. Yes. In the lingo. Um, we um, acapella is such a rabbit hole. It's not even funny at this point. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how many people yeah, in the acapella world? Like you have to, like the yeah, acapella is such a deep rabbit hole. Mm, it's crazy. 100%. Like, because people who are in it, like you'll just be talking about, like, I don't know, like. Like you'll you'll like say the name like oh like Jeff Castellucci or like Lane Stein and just like expect people to like know who you're talking about and then like you speak to <clears throat> anyone who doesn't really follow a cappella and they're like who the what? heck is that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I've made that mistake before like like as well because like I I really like groups like I don't know like like Home Free for example like country music isn't big in the UK really right and I'm like a massive Home Free fan. I'm, see, yeah. I'm seeing them on Sunday, actually, in concert, which I'm really excited about. But, That's um, going to be cool. I'm so excited. And, like, if, if I say to anyone, like, yeah, I, you know, they're like, oh, what kind of music do you listen to? And I'm like, like how do I tell them I listen to country a cappella music? Um, <laughs> it's so <sound> cool, you know? <laughs> you know um, but, like, how do you tell them that? No, I actually genuinely just say that I listen to country acapella music. I've had a few like reactions of people like, oh, okay. And I'm just like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Sometimes you, they'll raise an eyebrow. What is acapella? But it's actually good. Like, I think, I think they expect it to sound like, you know, like people's um, school groups where they're like, um, not like produced in a studio or anything. And like the pictures aren't always there and stuff like that. Just like, I think people think of that when they think of acapella, but it's actually just like, <laughs> you know, like it, 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 I think that's the thing that blew my mind. It's just, it can sound so like so much like instruments or like so much this, like with the same punchiness as like, you know, a rock song or a pop song. That or, is what really attracted me to acapella. And that's why I'm still in it and haven't left is 100%. that to me, it seems like it just re- flat out requires just as much, if not more talent to make music out of just your body and mouth than it does some instruments. Now, granted, this doesn't discount the, the talent that it takes to play said instruments, but to be able to imitate the instrument, mix it to where it sounds like the instrument and yeah. do it back to back on a regular basis. Mm hmm takes a lot of talent that's that's what really drew me to it like this the people in acapella world are just next level singers i'm telling you so some of some of these guys are just like the talent is crazy i think i think the thing that like still blows my mind about it is just that like the opportunity for like creativity with it because like where you're trying to imitate instruments you know like where does that end because like you can you know you can sing like a like words in the background or like dims or something but like you know like especially the more i get into like mixing and like sound engineering the more i'm like okay well i could like take this like like watermelon sugar especially at the end is taken in very much like an edm sort of direction yeah you know and like i think like just just having the ability to do that and like express ideas in that sort of way is, is just so cool mm-hmm. it is the best it's it's, it's probably my favorite area of music yeah yeah, exactly, exactly. And I feel like, like it, like it doesn't end there, right? Like you can do. Oh no, it doesn't. Genuinely, yeah. whatever you want, and it's it's so satisfying when it's just the voice. Like I think, like yeah, you know, like I sometimes I like sit back and like, you know, like especially after I made something like watermelon and sugar, I was just like, I didn't know my voice could do that, you know, or like have that sound. Mm-hmm. And and it is like I just think there's nothing more exciting. It is. It's truly a humbling but amazing thing. Yeah, it's incredible. Okie doke. Let's see. So the next one we have on here. Um, what are your record high and low natural chest notes? Mm, chest notes. Okay. Um, so low chest notes is G sharp. G sharp one. I've I've like just about got there. 
on a couple of occasions. One time when I was ferociously hungover. <laughs> I, was so, <laughs> I was so hanging. It was like the day after my, um, my birthday. And I, I was in Nottingham, which is like a city up north with, um, with an acapella group, actually, that I was in at the time. We were recording for an album, but it was my birthday. We did like, um, we like, we, we, um, we did this like jungle juice bucket thing. Like, you know, where you, I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about drinks on here and have it be like, go for it. Go safe. for it. Yeah. Okay. We, we basically, put, like every, every drink that we, we could find at the supermarket in a bucket and threw a bunch of Haribo's in there as well to make it sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then drank it. It tasted like juice. And I, I, um, yeah, I was messed up after that. <laughs> Basically I slept all day. Like genuinely yeah. I must've slept for like 13 or 14 hours, which has also never happened in my life. Woke up and was just like, well, you know, like was just like drop that note out of nowhere. I had, I had that like Glenn Miller voice. <laughs> like, yeah. um, so got a G shop there. And I also had it, the day after I came back from the base gang trip, um, I don't know what happened, but like my voice was so high that whole trip. Like I was struggling with C2s for so much of the trip. And mm -hmm. then I come back, have like a mega sleep and my voice was at like a B flat all day. But like in the morning I had like a D shop. Um, record highs. Um, thing is, I'm really bad at telling the difference between like mix and like chest voice. So I'm just going to say like, without falsetto or like okay. clear head voice um i've got up to a d6 before yeah d6, that would definitely d5 d5 i was I'm gonna like, say uh, yeah, yeah d6. <laughs> that's probably still a mix in partial mix and maybe yeah, must, maybe must to the d5 been, but yeah i think i think probably like to the point where i'd say it's still like a hundred percent chest it's probably like a b flat four um, yeah once but okay. it was it didn't sound good <laughs> i don't think i don't think like daily I, I would be comfortable going past like a g or a g sharp really yeah in chest right there with you i mean like yeah. i i so i mean my record high and as far as i remember this was full chest my record high i had the c sharp five twice nice, nice. but that's um uh that's full ch that may be full chest but that was only twice so i mean yeah that's, take that for what it's worth it's cool though. i feel like the more you like hone it right like the more accessible it will become yeah for sure yeah all right well, so that so, like you know the stretching stuff i was saying about like works yeah. for the high end as well so i did not know that good to know okay. so for those that are listening give that a shot and we'll see yeah. what uh see how it turns out for you yeah all right so um one more and then we're gonna switch gears a little bit so okay. do you have any tips tricks or life hacks for anyone that sings or wants to sing um just singing in general singing in general making a career out of singing yeah. you know that whole, um, that whole okay so for for making a career out of singing um i found i found tiktok to be so good just for organic growth like um i feel like with with youtube and instagram it's harder to build up like an audience but because tiktok pushes out your videos to like you know evenly like even if you've got like 12 followers or if you've got like 200,000, they'll kind of push it evenly across like you know a lot of people and see how it does and if it performs well it will like push it to more people mm -hmm. um so starting out on tiktok i thought i found to be like really good um getting on top of trends has been also really helpful like especially if there are like videos that are blowing up and you duet them and you add a bass part that's like engaging i found you know that to be really really helpful um the biggest thing i i genuinely think as well just in terms of singing um but also just in terms of really anything in general is like just starting like i know so many people that like they just won't post anything you know, like anything at all, mm -hmm. um, because they're afraid of like people thinking it's bad, you know, or like, oh, like, what will my friends think? And I think like, <laughs> that no, was you, me like, at one point. Actually, yeah, exactly. But like, like, you know, you post like TikToks and you like, you'll, you'll make music content. And it's like, I think it's so great. Like just 
just like I always think like something is better than nothing. And I, I think like for people who are starting out, like don't be afraid of like just giving it a go. Cause I always think like you have to start to improve, you know? Like yeah. I, I especially for something like like I won't say for singing because I, I still think I've got a huge ways to go with singing. Um but like with mixing, like I, I, I can look back on like my earlier mixes and feel like I've made like real progress. Mm-hmm. And I'm still not where I want to be, but I feel like I can see the progress. And it's like, but so much of that has just come from just making stuff that I can mix and then just practicing mixing like over and over and over again. And just like over time, like things will like slowly click. And it's the same with singing and it's the same with just so much of life in general, really. And I, I feel make sure that you start somewhere folks exactly and it's always like you know just like baby steps right like you know maybe maybe like a 15 second duet or something is like the way to start or like even just like singing along to yourself in your room like just just doing something is is the way forward i think it's the best it's it's better than inactivity 100 percent. always making sure you you can't jump in the pool and start swimming in the deep end if you don't know if you don't jump in the kiddie pool and learn how to swim exactly exactly i feel like so many people you know like like i've even fallen into this trap of just like um it's like you know you compare yourself to like i don't know if i were to compare my mixes to like voice plays mixes or something they've got like ed boyer mixing who's been mixing for like 15 plus years you know and like Mm -hmm like has like a full studio and all like all the rest and like for me to like compare my mixes or like my singing voice to like pentatonics is you know members of singing voices or like you know i'd be like oh but like i don't sound like them and then there's so much to be said for like not beating yourself up about that and just being like like the only person you should really compare yourself to is yourself and Mm -hmm. like i'm a big believer in that like comparison is the thief of joy and so like you know if you can be better like in music or at singing or any of this than like you were the day before, then I think that's a massive win. Absolutely. Some really good words to live by there, folks. Um, All right. So we are going to hit, we are going to change gears here a little bit. So this next section is a spot for you to do any advertisements, self plug, share what you've got going on in your life. Talk about any merch, anything like that. You have the floor for the next few minutes to kind of advertise and let you, let us know what you got going on in your life. Thank you so much. So, um, sort of like mentioned this a few times actually in the podcast, but I have a cover coming out tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Watermelon Sugar on my YouTube. Um, you just search Mana Sharma on YouTube and it'll come up. Um, also, I have a Patreon as well. So please, um, if you like what I'm doing, um, you know, if if you want to support me, because I'm like I'm still a student. You know, like um, I'm on like a student budget. Like uh, trying to like it's 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 you know trying to balance it alongside uni. Like I w- I would love to be able to like put more time towards it, and mm-hmm. um, having like the finances behind it is just like you know just like an awesome way to to do that and just to like support me as well. Like you know, and and to become like part of like you know like my Discord server as well. Like I've got like a really nice um group of people going on there and like i've become like you know really good friends with with some of them as well like it's like it's so nice to have this like little community so if you want if you want to join that and be a part of that like you know would love to have you um again like my marathon fundraiser is going to be um like you know plugged here like you're kindly putting it in the description which I'm, i'm really grateful for um so yeah definitely consider supporting that trying to help raise awareness for male eating disorders um something i think is is so so important nowadays especially with the rise of like social media and like fitness on social media i think um what else what else do i want to support yeah tiktok.com forward slash man of sings um that's my tiktok that's where my my biggest audience is but um gonna be making a lot more videos from now on especially like now that i'm back from the trip and stuff and i've got like real time to put towards content creation um uni starting quite soon but i'm going to be trying really hard to like you know make make as many videos as i can alongside that but yeah just just make sure you're along for the journey and whatever like even if it's a like or a subscribe or 
anything like even if you just watch it like we'd love to have you on for the journey so thank you so much yeah guys make sure you check him out it's like i said i'll have all of his information in the description below so where you can go yeah. check him out he's a fantastic individual he's very good at what he does so just make sure you pay him a visit and thank see so what much. he's all about yeah. also, and likewise and thank you so much for having me on this podcast as well man i really Really absolutely good. absolutely yeah. so the um if you are done with your self-promotion piece we are going shift gears into the next little um section that i have here where yeah. my guests are given an opportunity to ask me any questions should they have any for me so you have the floor for the next few minutes for that as well cool um what made you decide to start a podcast uh this is one of my favorite questions so yeah um way back all the way last year um i really kind of started getting into the understanding that okay i have a voice right i i have a passion for music and i want to help educate not only educate people on music but like i want to help people grow their appreciation for music but i was like but how do i do that and then with the recent influx of podcast related content out here on social media i've it, it it hit me like a light bulb i was like interview singers get their life story help them or get get what they have to say share it with the people that they just share it with people so that way they can not only understand that the music that that artist puts out better, but they can also understand the artist that they like to listen to on a whole new level. And it's ever since then, it's just been history. The rest has been history. I remember being told by my dad several years ago, a lot of years ago when I was younger, he said, son, you have the ears for it. You have the ear for it, but you're not doing anything with it. And I remember getting that thought back into my head it crossed through my mind last year before the channel opened and i thought to myself well i can sing but no one's going to listen to me starting out so a why don't i use my voice for something else that would probably get more attention a but would also benefit everyone else better so that way they can you know learn about their artists they like to listen to and then maybe one day down the road, I can start pushing out a little bit of music here and there. So I can like have this one platform called Ethan Drew Music, where I do anything music related. Of course, we'll have this podcast called The Vocast. But now I, every once in a while, I like to release a song or two. But I guess in, in short, that's kind of how the channel got birthed, is that I was like, OK, I have a voice. What do I do with it? And I remember being like i want to help people understand music and i want to help people understand the artists that put out that music so and the rest was history i think that's awesome man um i, I think i think that's so cool i, th I think you know getting to because because you know like until you know until recently there's not been a lot of like acapella like podcasts out there there's not been like an opportunity to hear more about like you know, like, especially for me, like, you know, the fact you've interviewed, like, people like uh, Elliot Robinson or, like, Marwan or, like, you know, like, these people that, like, like, you know, I, I've been, like, huge fans of it. It's, it's so cool to, like, be able to to listen to them as people rather than just as singers. That's something uh, else that I really liked sharing in this podcast series is that showing that the people that we listen to music from, they're human just like the rest of us. And they are a lot of these people are really down to earth and some of the things that some people may say about them may not always be true. It's just basically, it's another way for me to clarify, you know, like yeah. these people are human. They are just like you and they are really cool. This is what, uh, this is what they do in their music. This is who they are as a person. You know, it's, yeah. it's all about transparency for me. hundred percent. hundred percent. I have one other question for you. Go for it. What is one music related thing that you couldn't live without? Ooh, that's a good one. Hmm. Something that I in music that I cannot live without. Ooh. 
Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, yeah. So, if I had to pick any one thing that I could not live without in music, I would have to say the passion in the performance and in the recording. Yeah. If I can't hear it, then what is it for? 100%. 100%. And most sometimes people may think that um, there's no passion in the way some people sing. And it may sound mm. like that, but you'd be surprised at how passionate some of these singers and musicians truly are. If If it's obvious that someone doesn't care about what they're doing, then that's something that that strikes a nerve with me and i'm like well if you if you're not passionate about it then why do it 100% no i've definitely i've definitely had that before if i can't got- hear it or see if i can't hear or see the passion in it then that's not that's not something i can really live without like if i hear music that has little passion or enjoyment in it then i'm like I can't, I can't live without that. I got to have that passion because that passion is not only what makes the music as good as it is. It's what brings it alive. hundred percent. Like it, like, I feel like if they're not excited about what they're making, it doesn't transfer onto like, you don't become excited about what they're making. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've definitely had that before where I've, you know, like I've, I've gone through phases of making TikToks because of what I thought people would want to see versus what I would actually like want to make or be inspired by Mm -hmm. and those tiktoks have never ever done well even though i thought they would versus the tiktoks i've made where i've felt like really like oh i've got an idea that i think is gonna be super exciting or like Mm -hmm. you know those those are always the tiktoks that like do the best yeah it is surprising how well that some of those do and like when people see you in your craft Right. And they're, you, they see you passionately doing what you're doing. Yeah. They admire that. 100%. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm in that crowd that um, admires a, a musician or a singer that is passionate about what they're singing or performing. 100%. I think if, that's, um, yeah, I think it's so important, right? Like, what's the point if you aren't passionate about it, really? Yeah. And that's in, in as, a, as an audience member, as a listener, I like I have to have that passion like I have to have somebody that's dedicated to the craft in order to get as much enjoyment out of it as they probably would want me to have it's like yeah. you've you've got to share the vibe with me brother <laughs> yeah exactly 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 that kind of thing is like you know when someone like really really loves what they're doing it's like infectious mm-hmm. you know? almost like you almost like just from seeing them enjoy themselves so much like it is it makes you like Oh, that's you know, like you just get this really warm, fuzzy feeling from it. Like I, I it's love it. it's great. It is the best feeling ever. Whenever that happens, so if I if I had to say if there's any one thing in music that I'd um that I can't live without, it's the passion that people put into the music. Hundred percent. Anything else sticks out that you uh, want to ask me about? Um. Plans for the future, music-wise? Ooh, yes. So that one's also a very interesting one. So um, this channel's taking off fairly well, I'm seeing yeah. so far. And I want to continue, A, doing the podcast, but B, eventually, like, I, th- I believe to me what feels like the right move is to keep the channel as Ethan drew music, continue on with doing the podcast, have this series going, and then just have it like a smattering of like other music related content. So like a little bit of my little bit of original music, maybe a reaction video here and there, maybe a, yeah. maybe even like a, a little jam session or something like yeah. that. But obviously with the primary, primary gimmick being the vocast, obviously. I mean, like, it's a bit of a smattering of, like, music-related content. But, like, I would say, like, probably the bigger chunk of all those probably would be dedicated to the podcast. So, fingers crossed. Um, that, w- that would be my my future plans for now is just continue doing what I'm doing and just getting a hold of more people to interview for sure. Awesome. Awesome. I love that, man. I'm excited for you. Oh, it's... 
it's exciting to see where it's going because I'm I'm now I'm able to monetize and I'm able to dedicate more time to this craft because I'm fin- being financially supported somewhat, albeit I'm in the early baby step stage of monetization, but I'm like, okay, I, this is actually a little bit more worth my time than it used to be. Like, obviously getting paid, it doesn't matter. I still have a passion for it and I love the craft. And so I, I would still do it if it was, if it, if it gave me zero dollars, zero cents. But to know that I can potentially get paid to do this and I love to do it, it's, it's truly humbling to me to be able to watch the channel take off and yeah. be able to do this and get paid to do it at the same time. It's, it's, it's amazing. I think, I think that is like, like an unparalleled feeling. It's like when you're already doing something that you're so passionate about and then it starts earning you money, it's like, well, it's just the best bonus. <laughs> it's, it's like, I, I, I kid you not. I think probably the night when I realized that I was eligible for monetization, yeah. I'm pretty sure I got a fr- frog in my throat and I started tearing up. I was like, really? I, that I can I can make some form of some semblance of money doing yeah. this. It's crazy to me. Yeah, I remember when I like the first day I got on the TikTok Creator Fund and just like seeing that notification to be like, yeah, like you're eligible. Like, it, like yeah, it's just unparalleled. It's like because it's never the intention starting out, right? Right, yeah, you you're just you're just there to spread the love for music and spread your content, but then you exactly. then you hit that threshold and you're like, "Wait a minute." Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, awesome. So cool. So cool. It is awesome. Anything else to come to mind? Um, no, that that's everything for me. Awesome. Thank you. So, we are going to transition into the next little piece where we have a few out the door questions as I'm going to start calling them. So, um you having worked with the bass gang on numerous occasions. Um, yes. So this is a specific group related question for people that work with them on a regular basis who, or who are a part of them. What is the funniest memory you have from working with your group? PG 13. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, oh, it's, it's hard. It's hard to put my finger on, on one. Um, one thing that does really come to mind is just like when when we were in um when we were in Br- um Bobby Bobby Bass does an incredible Kermit voice like it's uncanny <laughs> like I know what you're yeah. talking about I know what yeah. you're talking about and he he'll just like he'll just read like really um like really funny like tweets and stuff like just like out of the blue. Just in um, just in in the Kermit voice, and and I like he was trying to teach me how to do it. I'm used to the Kermit voice, but like just just my favorite memory is just like we'd be in the car on the way back from like a video shoot, and we'd all just be losing our minds because like everyone would keep giving him stuff to read in the Kermit voice. <laughs> the best thing is the best thing ever. Were you were you a part? Were you in that chat back when the base the base nation Discord had was fresh? It had freshly been recreated after some form of hack attack. And it was like the day after that it came back up. It it was when you were in Brno with the base gang and they were all over there. He, I don't know. Oh, I mean, I, I think I know what was up, but he was reading tons of different Kermit things and dropping the recordings in the discord and I was listening to these, and I could not stop laughing. Oh my I don't God. know no, if you've heard I these there yet. For that, but but um, we would have the same on like our, our group chats, um, where just like like every so often, like Casper would send like a TikTok, or like I would send a TikTok and be like, "Bobby, read this," and Bobby would just send back an audio, <laughs> <laughs> just like reading it out. We all just lose our minds, like even after afterwards when we've gone home. There is um there's a couple of pin messages in the general chat of the Base Nation Discord. So if you <laughs> if you want some entertainment, um Bobby may or may not have been will will I won't say it, but he may he may have been in another headspace, we'll put it that way. 
and he was reading Kermit in his Kermit voice, and it's it's worth your time. <laughs> Just look up the pin messages in the general chat in the base nation. Okay, I'll, de I'll definitely check that. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Any oh, other great memories? Awesome um, oh, there's so many. There's so many. Um, <laughs> there was um, we we were in um, we were we were shooting in in this location called um, Peach Governor Sedge, and that is like like just really hard to say for some reason. Like especially when we'd never heard the name before, and Peter was giving like a, a talk for the documentary, like a little segment where he was being like interviewed, and yeah. um, like he just like could, couldn't remember the name. For the life of him, he kept being like, "Like, oh, like, yeah, where, where are we? Where are we?" And um, <laughs> so, like, he just, he just couldn't remember. And then, like, and he just opens with, he's just like, because he didn't want to forget it. He's just like, "Beach Governor Sedge, that is where we are." <laughs> and, yeah, I remember being behind the camera, and just losing my mind. <laughs> like, I've never heard anyone open an interview with that. He's just like, "Beach Governor Sedge." <laughs> Pe okay. <laughs> Peter. I, sometimes now I just like really randomly out of the message voice <laughs> moment. You're like Peach Governor Sedge. <laughs> Peter, we need to I need to I need more context on this story, brother. Tell tell me about it later. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So funny, man. Yeah, that we, is we awesome. That sounded like a really fun trip when you all were over there. It, it was so much fun. It's like a once in a lifetime, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Super, super, like, so grateful to have been, like, you know, like a part of it and to come along. I had, I had a great time. Oh, absolutely. All right. So, just a few more and then we'll wrap this thing up. So, um, we kind of sort of know the answer to this already, given the fact that you use subharmonics on a regular basis. But, um, what are your thoughts on extended techniques as a whole in music? <laughs> as a whole um i think so i yeah like true i love subs I, like subs for me are my like definitely my preferred technique is is a thing that, like i think i think through a combination of just like genetics and practice like just like so, so much practice um like my subs are really strong like they've got this really like kind of like heavy sound um mm -hmm. so so for me i think like the they're my preferred sort of method to like replace my chest voice because i don't have like you know like i i would probably even go as far to say i'm like i'm more of a baritone than a bass like i'm, I'm not i wouldn't consider myself like a like a real bass you know yeah. um and so for me to get down into like the first octave like i'm not going to chest it like jeff or tim you know like mm -hmm. i'm or like most of the time um like sub subs for me like i've been able to do subs live i think like we were at the iccas and i was able to drop like a big b flat like a like right at the end and like it, it it sounded like really cool so i think used in the right situations like some of these extended techniques can be really really cool however i think that sometimes I think with because you can get really really low with these like extended techniques mm -hmm. i think like the danger is definitely like pushing them to the point of like where it just it's just noise you know like it's not music you know yeah. like there there is i i think there is like a limit right <laughs> like you know you get down past like i don't know like an a a zero really or like even like a b flat zero is like pushing it a little bit like mm -hmm. a couple of times can can be really cool but like you know where, where the focus is just on going as low as possible I it becomes it less appetizing exactly exactly or just like just using like overusing them like you don't want to put low notes where low notes aren't needed like mm -hmm. in in um in my arrangement the approach that i've been trying to have is just to be like tasteful with it you mm -hmm. know because because no one really wants to see a like a song of people just like boom, 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 like the whole time, you know? Like, yeah, it's like it's not, just, yeah. It's, it's just rumble. Like, mm -hmm. it's cool when it's like shocking, you know? Or if it's like in the background and like mixed well, or like, you know? Or it's like, I think, I think 
use them sometimes but not all the time and like be tasteful about like what notes you're trying to hit i think mm -hmm. yeah i agree with that one personally as my personal opinion you kind of share a, a similar view of extended techniques as elliot robinson does yeah he um he mentioned um i wouldn't say he hates them but to me whenever i was talking with him when he was on he has an apparent distaste for them but doesn't hate them um he's one of those guys where it's pretty much in the same boat like i guess a little bit more so like he's more like it kind of takes the fun away from being natural mm, i I, and I'm like, yeah, I totally agree in that in that regard. But at the same time, I'm one of those people who are like, I would encourage you to explore in your voice a little bit. Just don't go overboard. Yeah. I'm just a big believer of like, if it sounds good, you know. Like, if it sounds good, then it, it matters less. Exactly. I think I think there is so much to be said for being natural. You know, like like, you know, when you hear like a real, real bass and you hear their like, their voice and it's so chesty it's like you can't you can't really replace that even yeah. as much as i like i love the subs like they don't like they're never going to sound exactly like a chess voice you know it, it, but, i mean it, you're not jeff castellucci you're not ken no. turner you're not elliot robinson you know like but you know. i think there's an opportunity with like subs to be like really creative with how you use them absolutely placements really far back and be like Ooh. And have it like be like this really cavernous sort of sound, and mm -hmm. I like I really like that. And I I think like you know like or you can do them like really soft or like like there's there's so much opportunity. And I think that's something that's like if it if it works in the piece, I think that's awesome. I just think you know when people like say they've got like oh like what's your range and it's like. Yeah, like G sharp minus fifteen because you've like <laughs> inhaled and you're like, oh. mm -hmm. you know, like uh, I think that's not uh, like, uh, 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 you know, it's I, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. like you know, <laughs> no thanks, just yeah, just like just like be real for a minute, like yeah, but I think I think using the right way though. Yeah, I'm in the same boat with you right there. Yeah. Um. So you've so you use subharmonics. Are there any other extended techniques that you use? Um, I use inhale as well, and I use growl. So in the Run Me Like a River TikTok, the C one isn't a sub; it's an inhale note. <laughs> um, yeah, because I I don't often have a C one. I have a D. I had a D one actually in Watermelon Sugar. That that was that was subs, um, but. I, I I use inhale on occasion. I, I do quite like it. I think it's it's only really good in a studio setting, though, when you can just like really mix it and just take all of the high end out of it. It is brutal how difficult it is to sustain a steady pitch with inhale bass. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'd use it if I didn't have like <laughs> melatonin to back me up, but um, yeah. like it's it's. It is tough, but it like I've you know like I've had times as well, and I've seen people definitely with better control than I do. But like the opportunity, like you can get really good with controlling it. I think it's just just takes an insane amount of practice. The other one mm -hmm. that I use is growl. Um, so in watermelon sugar, there's D one and C one growls. Um, I do like using it. I think like the Tim Faust sort of method of growling where you like keep as much air inside and you don't like breathe it all out it's so mm -hmm. cool um yeah love using that i've never been able to do like throat bass or like chest fry or anything though so you mean you can't do this <laughs> <laughs> i can try but it's a cool sound <laughs> i love giving my guests a hard time every now and then i'm not even gonna go near it i'm not even gonna go near it and like, chest fry has just never come naturally to me at all do you so mean you're not able to do this at all no 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 i can't oh, i mean you kind of did it right there a little bit but yeah but it was like it's like if, if you're in the room i think like because there's the mic i can just like uh you know but like it's not like it, it's, it's maybe like one decibel like it's, it's like so quiet <laughs> but yeah no i understand completely yeah i but, was not expecting my fry to sound that good right there but, yeah, that was that was a solid that was a solid chess run. Um, uh, but it, yeah, 
but yeah, those are the uh, yeah, those are the extended techniques that he uses, folks. Yeah, I think, uh, I think subs subs are just unreal, unparalleled. Sub, right. Subs are great. I've yeah. recently actually gotten to where I can actually use them on a regular basis, and it's a great feeling yeah, too. It's a great feeling, especially you know, when you, you just learn like how to do it freely between them. You say, "Uh, uh, 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 uh yeah. yeah, literally, exactly. it's just exactly. easy. It's awesome. It's great." But um, let's see a couple more, and we'll wrap this up. Um. What is one of your favorite things about being a singer? I, I'm I'm such a massive fan of just progress. Like I I think you know being able to make progress in in any aspect of life really is awesome. But it's so cool to like you know like if you sing something and then you like look back on like three years ago like your ability to sing the same thing and be like wow like I've actually like come a long way i think that's so beautiful the other thing that i think is one of my favorite things about being a singer if not my favorite it's just like you know when you're in a room with people and like you all sing something and like there's like harmonies there or like i had this when i got into um like one of the, one of the first acapella groups i did and just like even now when i still do acapella groups so much of what i do is in a room by myself stacking my own voice but when you're in a room with people i just think like that's like magic you know it is like great. It's it's crazy. It's like just next level feeling when it like especially when stuff locks in. I think I think that's so cool. You get the rhythm, the timing. You get the notes, the pitches. Everything lines up. Yeah. It is like like the doors of heaven itself are opening up. Incredible. It is truly incredible. Yeah. Which Absolutely. Why I think I stuck with choir for so long. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the last question I have for you to wrap up the podcast today, if you could steal a fellow or any singer's voice alive or passed on already, who would it be and why? Ooh. Oh, that's a, that's a toughie. Um, and then you can, you can, you can pull multiple, any voice uh, alive or dead. And you can also um, mix qualities of voices if you like Ooh. okay i think i just think tim faust's voice is just just incredible like just like you know like technique wise like range wise i think like like tim faust is also great at conveying emotion but Avi's ability to convey emotion, like Avi is so, like he just he just gets, like just feelings across so well. Like he really makes me like, like he makes you feel things when you listen to him. You're just like, you can get, like he's got that like, passion that I was talking yeah, about. Exactly, exactly. You can be like welling up from listening to, it. like mm-hmm. like quarter past four. You know, like that mm-hmm. song is like emotional as anything, and like. I just, I just think their voices are just unbelievable. And Absolutely. Just, yeah. And like, you know, like not to forget um, <laughs> Jeff as well. Right. Like, I think, I think like, like Jeff's, like, you know, his like breathiness and his like lower range, like mm-hmm. proper low first octave range. Like where, when he does it, like in a breathy way, I think there's something so just like electric about it. Like it's so cool. Especially like where he did his cover of Ain't No Sunshine, he had all those breathy A ones. Yeah, exactly. Or like, you know, in like High and Dry, where he does that like G sharp one? Yes. It's like Golden know, Hour, the G sharps, and that one too. Exactly. Yeah. There's so many iconic ones. I think, I think like just having like a common. I mean, the thing is, if I had any of any of the greats, if I had any of their voices, like I'd count myself so lucky, you know? Absolutely. I would yeah. say if I could steal a bass singer's voice, if it was me, I would probably have to say, um, if I could steal Glenn Miller's resonance and combine it with J.D. Sumner's range, yeah, then that would just be that. Well, I feel like the earth would shatter because someone with that much talent shouldn't exist. 
Yeah. <laughs> but hundred percent, hundred percent. If I could, I have, that's who I'd be. Hundred percent. No, I like. I I I totally hear that. I think like. I I just think there's so much to be said for like, being able to sing like across like like through through the high end as well i think that's so cool when like you know like like the like avi and tim and like jeff who are like i mentioned like they've got like s- such great like then I, I i love the idea of not being limited to just bass right like, I, th- I think that's like the the ability you have for then like expression throughout like a song because like is is so crazy because then like you know if you're singing high and then you can like like if the verse, like like if the music like slows down and you can take it really low, I think that's like people get caught so off guard by it, and I think that's yeah. like such an yeah. awesome way to give contrast to the music. So like, also something also that's really cool about them in particular is just how flawlessly they navigate through their passagios. Yeah, yeah. It's my it's the best. Yeah, so to, take technique wise, I think it's just something that they've got like takes like hours and hours and hours of work. I think mm-hmm. that's something about like. Like you know, like Casper Fox, Casper just has like one of the most like seamless mixed voices I've ever heard. Absolutely, so, I'm in total agreement on that. Yeah, just like to be able to just like into your high into your high range, like it's nothing. It'd just be mm-hmm. be the dream. Absolutely. Yeah, folks, that wraps up the podcast for today. Mono, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you we so much uh, we ran for an hour and 30 today, pretty much right on the dot of where we usually like to um, cut it off, if possible. So, guys, if you are enjoying the content, like I said at the beginning of the video, I would appreciate a like, a comment down below helps with the algorithm. And if the algorithm is getting a bunch of comments on a video, it'll push it back to other people. Spread the love. And uh, make sure you subscribe so that way you're notified whenever I upload a video. And one more thing too, like I said at the beginning, if you're enjoying the content and you want to support me in a greater fashion, the by far the best way to do that is through Patreon. You can support me as little as $1 a month. It's not required to enjoy my content by any means. Guys, I love you. Take care of yourselves. Manav, it was good to see you and have you Thank on. You too. And uh, we love you. Take care of yourselves, guys. We will see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye. Bye.